Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's video we are going to be talking about art fairs uh, and the reason why we're going to be discussing that is that I just had an art fair this weekend and I thought that I would do a bit of a vlog, do a little multitasking here, work on my bark on this painting here while I talked um, because I wanted to discuss it while it was still fresh in my mind. There were a few things that I wanted to talk about. I've been wanting to do this for a while now and I thought this way I could uh, just do a bit of multitasking and we could maybe accomplish two things at once. Um, before I start talking about that though, if you are interested in knowing what it is that I am working on, what mediums I'm using, this is Yupo paper. This frog is being done in acrylic ink and I'm currently working on the bark which is being done in Tim Holtz Adirondack alcohol inks. So that is what I am currently doing. So, okay, back to our topic, uh, art fairs. Um, I did a video a while back on art fairs and what I thought of them, if I thought that they were worthwhile. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, just art fairs in general, maybe if you hadn't done them, the things that you should consider before doing them. And I think I had mentioned in that video, by the way, I will link to that video. If you haven't seen it and would like to, I will link to that either right now or I will link to it at the end of this video, one or the other. So um, you may be wondering, well, why is she doing an art fair if she, you know, really kind of had hesitations about it in her last video? Well, you know, I have come kind of a long way since I started and um, an artist friend of mine who was considering doing shows asked me like sort of point blank. She said, how do I talk at an art fair when I am so shy and so much of an introvert? And I thought, you know, that that is the question, isn't it? I mean, not everybody is an introvert that's an artist but many of us artists are indeed introverts and the thought of being stuck in a booth with your own art and having people come and basically look like they're judging your work I mean that's kind of brutal when you think about it so I thought that I would give my two cents on this and just uh, let you know how it was for me when I started doing art fairs. Uh, this is my fifth season, so by I am by no means in any way an expert at it. Uh, there are people who have been doing it for, you know, decades. Um, but I have learned a few things in the time that I have done it. And when I first started doing art fairs, uh, my very first year, I remember vividly, uh, it was horrible, you guys. It was, it was beyond horrible. It was like brutal is what it was. My husband was there to help me, um, and I had a, a, a pretty substantial body of work that I took, and I took prints, and, and at that time, there was maybe between five and 8,000 people that would uh, attend this festival, and it was in my hometown and I thought, you know, if I'm gonna put my name out there and get my name known and get my work seen, I'm gonna have to do this. So I knew that it was something that I had to do, but it, it was very, very difficult. I, every time someone came into my booth, I kind of felt like a trapped animal. Um, I had no confidence in my work. Um, again, it was my first fair, so I was very green and every time someone would come in and ask a question, I would pretend like I was busy doing something. Um, I mean, like, I, I would pretend like I was hunting for something under the table. That's, that's how sad it was for me, but I just could not bear the thought of, I just, it, I was just so uncomfortable. It, I mean, see, it's even making me uncomfortable talking about it, and this has been years ago but that's really kind of how bad it was um, but at the end of the day there was more positive than there was negative of course there were people that made negative comments um, there's always going to be people like that but 
the positive comments far outweighed the negative comments and I left feeling really pretty good. Um, and when I decided to do it again the following year, I wasn't much better, but again, I hadn't really practiced it much either. It's one of those things, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And that is absolutely true. If you are a huge introvert, you can fake it. You can fake <laughs> You can fake being an extrovert. You just have to practice it. It's almost like you just sort of turn it on and you go on autopilot. And and now that I've um, just ending my fifth season of doing fairs, I'm pretty good at it now. When people come in, I'm able to make eye contact with them. I, you know, I'm able to um, talk to them first. I don't go running and hiding or make up an excuse to leave my tent and uh, or look underneath my my chair for something that's not there. You know, I don't do that anymore. Now I'm all smiles and I'm actually looking forward to talking to people because these are my customers. These are the people who are going to give me the information that I need in order to make my business better. They are the ones telling me what they want to see, what size they want it in, um, what animals they would like to have me paint. Um, they give so much information. And if you don't know who your, your target market is, this is one of the best ways to find that out. People that are coming in, what age are they? Um, what does it look like they do for a living? I mean, it's not like you can say, hey, how old are you? And or what do you do for a living? Um, of course, you really can't come out and say that to somebody unless you are on topic of that subject anyway. But, um, but you can see generally, you know, people are happy to give that kind of information. At my fairs, I have people that come in and say, yeah, I'm a secretary at work and I, um, I really, you know, the walls are gray and I just crave color and so that's why I love your work so much. Well, that lets me know uh, what, what this person does for a living and what they use my art for. So it's a great resource. Um, it really is. It's a great resource. And if you look at it as an experiment, <laughs> instead of looking at it as putting yourself out there and hoping that you get a good response, I mean, of course, everybody wants that. But, you know, sometimes if you can take the, the fear out of it, um, not, you know, don't give it any power and just treat it like an experiment, you kind of feel like you're more in control of the situation. So anyway, back to my friend who had asked me how I talk at art fairs um, when, when I'm obviously shy. Um, it is a bit daunting when you don't know anyone. Um, but you just try to keep remembering that people are there because they want to see you and your work. I mean, that's why they're coming into your booth because they want to see you. They, they're coming to you. It's not like you're having to make a cold call, a cold sales call or something like that and ask somebody if they wanna put your work in their stores. That's a whole nother animal. I, I mean, I still have a hard time doing that, a very difficult time doing that, but I haven't done it very much. And again, I think if I practiced it, instead of ran from it, I think that I would probably be a lot better than I am. If I had to do it, I could, but it's still one of those things that I need work on. But people are coming to you. If you can keep that in mind, that's also very helpful. Um, chances are they will have questions for you about your work. Uh, like, how did you do this? What medium did you use? Um, how do you choose your subjects? You know, things like that. Now, those are things that you, I'm sure, know the answer to and can answer uh, with clarity. So if people are there to see your work 
then they're going to have questions about your work. And if you're forced to talk to somebody and you don't know what to talk about and you have to make the first move, talk about your art, talk about what you know. They don't want to know your personal history. They just want to know, they want to know more about you and, and your process, your methods, your mediums, and things like that. So that's like my first uh, real tip about that. Um, it's also important to talk about your work with a passion um, and make it your goal to get other people as excited about your work as you are. If you love your work and you embrace it and you're proud of it, people are going to get excited about it also. If they come in and they see that you are you know just kind of sitting there and it's like oh well god i wish i was somewhere else they're probably not going to get very excited about your work but if you're excited about it you know that kind of thing rubs off on other people you will get other people excited about your work too um you know if you if you see somebody lingering on a piece don't be afraid to tell them how you were inspired to create it how long it took for you to finish it a lot of people will ask, well, how long did it take you to finish this? And, you know, um, what did you use? And, and how were you inspired? And, and so you, you definitely will be able to discuss things like that. Uh, most people are very interested in hearing things like this. And if all else fails, simply standing next to your work and smiling is huge, believe it or not. People just want to connect with you they want to see the artist that that's why they're there you know they're there because they want to they don't they're not just there to see the work they want to see the artist that created it you know you can go online and see things that people did without having to put faces with the names but art shows make it very very personal and um, yeah, I think that, that that is a a great method to do. So um, you know, and, and also a lot of people are going to be more intimidated by you than you are of them. Believe it or not, it doesn't seem like that's the case, but that really is is true. I mean, they're coming into your booth. That's your space and you are the one who created this work and you know maybe someone's coming in who wishes that they could do what you're doing you know it, it it's really all in the way that you look at it so i really think that if you are on the fence about whether or not you should do an art fair i highly recommend that you do at least one I recommend that everybody do at least one because you really don't know if you're going to like it until you try. And if you don't know who your target market is and you're still trying to figure that out, you can't get any better than going to an art fair and simply observing these customers who are going to be coming up and inquiring about and purchasing your art. It is the best resource there is, especially if you do most of your sales online like I do. I don't get a chance to really talk to my customer base. I do on Facebook. I know the people that follow me on Facebook. I've had many of the same followers for years, and so I do feel like I know a lot of them very well. But the people who purchase from me on Etsy, who were just random people, you know, I don't know who they are, how old they are. I don't know what prompted them to purchase my artwork. You know, did they buy it for a nursery? Did they buy it for a gift? Did they buy it, you know, because they have a special place in their heart for wolves or or frogs or you know it's it it's just it's not something that you can find out but people at art fairs they want to tell you why they are purchasing your stuff i get a lot of people that come in and they tell me what they want it for 
um, or who it's for, what they're going to do with it. A lot of them send pictures and, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a good learning experience. And if you can just look at it that way, um, then I think that it would be a lot easier for you to, to get through it than to put a lot of weight on it and say, oh my gosh, this is, this is what I'm going to be doing to make a living. And if it works out, then great. But if it doesn't, what am I going to do then? And oh my gosh, that's a lot of pressure. You guys, that is a lot of pressure, unneeded pressure. So treat of it, treat it as something that's fun. Um, treat it as an experiment and, I think that you will do a lot better. So anyway, those are my thoughts on fairs. And if any of you have done art fairs, or even if you haven't and you would like to, if you have any additional questions on them, or you know, if there's anything that you want to contribute to this conversation, please feel free to leave a comment below. Um, everybody is really good about uh, communicating with each other and giving tips. I love that when you guys share your tips uh, on on various subjects here. That really enhances, uh, I think, what this channel is about and promotes uh, people just sort of helping people out. And so I really do appreciate that. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day and I am just going to keep working on my frog here and hoping that I can get him done here pretty soon because this little guy has taken me so long. I don't know why, but my gosh, it's like he doesn't want me to finish him for some reason. So hopefully I will get him done soon and uh, if you're interested in seeing him, hop on, ha, hop. That's isn't that funny. Hop on over to my Etsy shop where I'm sure I will have prints of him up at some point. So anyway, you guys have a good day and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye.